Good day everyone. Now we will have a quick walk through uh, through this example. Uh, so uh, assume we have a gene mutation with a prevalence of 20%, and uh, this gene mut uh, this mutation causes uh, reduction in the survival, whether overall survival or event-free survival for patients who have positive uh, mutation. Uh, let's assume for our example that we have uh, three years. Uh, overall survival for the control with negative mutation 65% and store it in a variable called control survival at time t uh, which will be three year overall survival for 65% uh, and then the experimental with positive mutation uh, overall survival is 40% and uh, the three year event free survival is 40% for control and 20% uh, for experimental uh, group. The study uh, duration is five years and the accrual is three years with follow-up of two years. The first step we'll do is to calculate median survival time estimate for overall survival and uh, start with control. Uh, we will see uh, later that uh, there is a formula uh, to calculate the median survival time from uh, the probability uh, of survival of, uh, of survival so first let's uh, calculate overall survival uh, median survival time call it m1 uh, overall survival at t equal 3 so uh, m1 overall survival is 4.83 m2 is which is experimental for overall survival will be 2.3 uh, then uh, we calculate the same for event free survival and again call it m1 event free survival and m2 event free survival we'll see later why this is useful and then calculate the ratio of control to experimental group which will be 4 and then calculate the hazard rate for uh, uh, from uh, overall survival at time t and again time t is three years so uh, the hazard rate of the control at three years for overall survival will be given through this formula and uh, for experimental overall survival and then the hazard ratio for overall survival will be 2.13 uh, hazard rate from uh, survival uh, of event three survival uh, we calculate the same formula and the hazard ratio for event free survival will be 1.76 now let's load library GS design and uh, calculate the sample size first for overall survival uh, the argument R lambda 1 which is the hazard rate for control at time t for overall survival and lambda 2 will be the hazard rate of experimental uh, arm at uh, time t for overall survival the maximum study duration is 5 years and the accrual duration is 3 years and follow up 2 years uh, the ratio of uh, the ratio here will be given as uh, experimental over control so it is 1 over 4 so it is 0.25 uh, alpha 0.05 two sided with beta 0.2 and sample size here is uh, 178 and uh, this will be divided 20% 80% between uh, experimental uh, slash control group respectively for event free survival uh, we use the same function uh, Changing just this argument, the hazard rate uh, of control and experimental at event free survival at time t, and the computed sample size here will be uh, uh, 212, which is uh, larger than uh, the uh, previous sample size uh, 178. So uh, we will go by the larger sample size. In a separate video, we'll confirm using uh, these values, we'll confirm uh, these results or these sample sizes using uh, the software of Vanderbilt University power and uh, sample size. But this will be in a separate video. Uh, then we account for dropout 
uh, and again we'll use the larger number which is 216 so we will need 270 subjects uh, to be able to detect the difference uh, between uh, the event free survival uh, between control and experimental uh, and uh, accounting for dropout rate 20%. A quick note that if your primary objective include detection of prevalence and you complete comp when you compute your uh, sample size needed uh, to detect the prevalence and it is larger than uh, 270 then you should go for uh, the higher sample size now let's make a quick check uh, for the power using uh, hmisc library uh, and uh, using the function c power we will use a control uh, event free survival uh, which is 0.4 as an argument again why we use event free survival because it gave me uh, the higher uh, or the larger sample size required so uh, control event free survival will be uh, 0.4 uh, and experimental will be 0.2 and the total sample size proposed by GS design is 216 and when we uh, check the power using C power we will see that <coughs> the power is uh, 83% so we are good to go but wait a minute if you are using Cox regression with uh, covariates then you have to check it using simulation uh, and uh, in this case we'll use s power which is a function that simulate power of two sample tests for survival under and i quote complex conditions so in this case we will need to calculate the hazard rate of experimental arm at uh, three years which will be retrieved through this formula and the hazard rate of control at uh, three years and get the hazard ratio which will be 1.76 we'll use a control sur survival of course at the event free survival calculation and it is 40% uh, or 0.4 and the time is three years and the total uh, sample size proposed was 216 we will use the uh, function quantile2 to create this object the argument used will be the control survival uh, of events uh, free survival and the time at which survival is uh, estimated we will also input uh, the hazard ratio drop in and drop out uh, means that uh, a control uh, drops and takes the intervention and the intervention drops and takes control so we will give here uh, 0 and 0 and we will account for the dropout rate of uh, sample size after final uh, calculation to create this object R sense, I will need to specify the follow up range here I put the range from 1 uh, to 4 years let's try uh, with the total sample size of 220 uh, and check with 1000 simulations uh, our proposed complex conditions how they impact our power as we can see uh, the power is 75.7 .7, so uh, the complex conditions actually reduce the power of our study so let's try a 230 sample size again 1000 simulations still have not yet achieved the desired power and we see the power increase but not yet uh, achieved 80 so at 240 79 let's try at 250 And now we can see that the power is uh, 81.6 so we can use uh, the 250 rather than 216 due to the complex conditions that we uh, proposed and now account for dropout for the 250 and we can see that uh, it is 313 subjects needed please note that uh, for calculation of 
sample size I use the function ceiling so that I guarantee that all roundings are rounded up Again, if detection of prevalence is an objective, then uh, we will go by higher sample size. When calculated at 95% confidence level, the sample size needed for detection of 20% uh, prevalence was uh, 246. And when uh, uh, adjusted, the ceiling was uh, 308. So we will go by uh, the sample size 313. Thank you.